Once Pavan received their next assignment, they stopped at the material printer to pick up the screws it had been printing. They were not threaded like screws, but had the general shape and weight. Mira loaded up her pockets, and then Povan directed his team to do the same so they could fight longer. I dislike how heavy these are and that we must carry the projectiles, but I like that you are able to kill so effectively. Let's not talk about killing. I'm pretending I'm doing something very different. I have never been in combat before. Even if my ship were in combat, we don't use handguns or rifles. We use huge guns that shoot missiles that take a team to load. Poven's face gentled. I understand. He patted her shoulder. We won't speak of what we do. We shall just do it. He then guided the team to another bay. This was one of the larger docking bays, which is where her ship was docked, and these ships had been filled with Vasili. Be mindful, Mira, they have a long jumping reach, Poven advised her. She nodded and went to where he was directing his team to set up. When we get a moment, we need to get to my ship so I can refill the air tank. How much air do you have left in it? About half a tank, maybe less. This bay was being defended by Flixusri and Drala. Once they were set up, Poven notified the teams that they were in position and would begin assisting as well as their location, so there wasn't any accidental friendly fire. As they began firing, they drew the Vasili. The first leaping Vasili surprised Mira, but she shot it as it got close enough. The surprise on its face as it died was satisfying. It's just a VR game, Mira. Just load, aim, and shoot. All too soon, she was out of air. I'm out of air. She said lowly, so that it wouldn't carry. The combination of her shooting a physical shot and the sounds of gunshots had made the Vasili hesitate, but they knew it wouldn't last long. Poven spotted her ship. Does your ship have any shields? No, but it's made out of a very sturdy metal. She knew they wouldn't have the words for different metal types. The names for their building material didn't translate for her either. Metal? Your whole ship is built out of metal. He was a little horrified at the thought of something so heavy. That should do. The plasma rifles can eventually get through, but it would take some time. The team then began to make quick moves to get behind cover, shoot for a bit, and then move to another area of cover. They had to take a zigzagging pattern to get there, but once there, they quickly filed in and closed the door. They could hear the shots hitting the ship, but everything was pretty calm within. Mira hooked up the tank and turned on the compressor. This should take about 15 minutes to full pressurization. Do you think the ship will hold that long? We will find out together, Pavan replied. It was nerve-wracking, especially when they could begin to see the orange-red glow where shots were being fired. They all watched with anxiety as the needle climbed towards full. The moment the needle hit full, Mira removed the tank, reassembled the gun, set the pressure, and loaded up. It was just in time as the first shots made it through the metal of the ship. Poven looked to Mira. Ready? Ready. She took up position with everyone else and the ship's door was opened. Mira made the first kill as the rest of the team took on another invader. It was slow going to finally clear out the bay, but it was finally finished. At some point while they fought, Poven had received a message that Black Hole had arrived and the tide of the battle was beginning to turn. Mira refilled her air tank before they moved to the next assignment, and she refilled her own pockets with the imitation screws from the pockets of her teammates, who were happy to be rid of the extra weight. They received another update while they headed to the third bay that Skeetling Hatchery had arrived. Pavan let out a sigh of relief knowing that the battle would be over soon, and they might just make it out of this free after all. Poven set the team into position and notified the other teams they had arrived and where they were set. He received back locations from the other three teams, which were each down to two or three members. The team was shocked at the losses, but it made them more determined to aid them. Mira heard that this was going to be a mix of Vasili and Lakshi. Poven let her know that the Lakshi were similar to the Imperia in their fighting ability, so she didn't have to worry about them leaping like the Vasili. The first few shots she made were normal as the Vasili were leading the attack. 
and then she saw her first Lakshi, except that it didn't look like the pictures she had been shown. They had this haze around them, and they were extremely tall at over eight feet, except they were eight F tall even though they hunched forward on arms that were too long to make sense. If they stood upright, they might be ten or eleven feet tall. Their heads had strange-looking antlers and were bone white. The eyes looked like black pits, and they were covered in black fur. Their hands ended in claws, while their feet ended in hooves, much like a deer's hoof. And then one looked at Mira. There was a strange crying sound, and she was mesmerized, feeling the need to walk towards it. She felt grabbing at her body, but didn't pay it any attention as she put one foot in front of the other. As she got closer, she began to feel more and more terror. The Lakshai was a few yards away when her vision went black. Poven was terrified. He didn't understand why the human was moving towards the Lakshi. He tried to get her attention while his team pulled at her to come back to position. It was crazy. It was like the fighting just paused around them as Mira walked closer and closer to this Lakshi, this monster. Mira then gripped the plasma axe at her waist in a white-knuckled grip. He saw that what was originally a blank look on her face had become fear and then wide-eyed terror. A guttural scream rent the air as Mira raised the now-activated axe and ran at the Lakshi. He could tell that the Lakshi was surprised before its head rolled past him. Mira's eyes were wild as she continued to scream and attack. She didn't even try to duck and dodge enemy fire. It was only an attack. Two Fluxusri that were left from one of the teams came over to join up with the Drala. What has happened to the human? One of them asked. I don't know. She didn't have this problem before. Poven replied as they continued to shoot at the enemy. Do you think you two might be able to handle her air gun? I can show you how to use it, but your kind is sturdier than mine. Maybe two of you working together would be able to handle it? We are willing to try. The Asili are raving about their versions. He quickly set them up and showed them how to load and shoot it. Mira had emptied her pockets out so that she could get to the screws better, so he added the ones still in his pockets to the pile. They worked to protect Mira as she hacked and slashed at the enemy, causing terror to whoever faced her. Soon enough, the inevitable happened, and a Vasili swiped at her, opening parallel wounds along her stomach and ribs with its claws. Poven and he was sure the Vasili thought that would snap her out of whatever this was. They were very wrong. She snarled. That was the only way Poven could describe it. She let out this bone-chilling snarl and redoubled her attacks. The Vasili only had a moment to feel happy. He had gotten in an attack before he joined the many dead, littering the floors in her wake. It felt like it took ages, but eventually the bay was cleared of enemy combatants. Mira was breathing hard as she looked around for someone else to attack. With the Lakshi no longer clouding her mind with fear, she slowly calmed and came out of the haze. There was so much pain, and she had lost so much blood. She touched her side and looked to see her hand come away red. The axe dropped to the floor as she swayed and dropped like a sack of flour. Mira! Poven called as he ran towards her. She was unconscious, but still breathing. We need to get her to medical. How? She is too solid for us. One of the Drala replied. Poven eyed her belt. We make her weightless. He tapped a few buttons, and she began to float a little above the floor. He gripped her belt, directed someone else to grab her belt too, and they began to run with her dragging through the air. By the time he made it to medical, he was hearing that the teams were only doing final sweeps through the halls to ensure there were none of the enemy left on the vessel. Enemy vessels were removed from the holds so that the few remaining pilots could land. Once she was in medical, the chief medical officer directed Poven to head to Mira's ship and look for a box with a red plus on it. He explained that Mira had inputted a few entries into her medical files for emergencies. One of those emergencies was what to do if a human lost a lot of life fluid as they would not have her kind on hand. Once Pavan returned with the box, the CMO removed bags of fluid. What's that for? 
he asked the CMO. She said in her notes that if she should lose blood, her body will make more but will need help. We must first seal the wounds which we have. She said that after that it is adding fluids and waiting. There is little else we will be able to do with what we know about her physiology. She said these saline bags will keep her hydrated if we use these needles to poke into her vein. She also dropped a few files into her medical records with a medical book of some kind. We are working through it. She has been very busy adding her written language to the database, so most of the documents she uploaded are legible. There are still a lot of gaps, but at least we also have diagrams in many cases. Do you think she knew about this? She mentioned that being paranoid is a human trait, and that she would rather worry and be wrong than to not worry and be very wrong, Poven replied. He then was asked to relay how she came to be so injured. That sounds like what happens to the quicks. The fear, I mean. The quicks share some minor genetics with the Luxi in that they both have some psionic abilities, the Luxi more than the quicks. Humans look nothing like either of those species. I hope she wakes soon. We now have many questions for her. Hey everyone, hope you loved the video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe for more awesome sci-fi content. And if you're feeling generous, check out our Ko-Fi page to support the channel. Every bit helps us bring you more stories from the stars. Thanks a bunch.